In this video, let's take a look at multi-track editing with Repitch 2. Now, if you're looking for detailed information, whether it's an in-depth walkthrough or an overview or what's new in Repitch 2, head over to the Synchro Arts YouTube channel. There's two really detailed videos there complete with chapters and you can jump to the different sections. In this video though, I just wanna talk about using the new multi-track editing capabilities and pinning reference tracks and how that can be useful in a workflow. So I've got a track that I'm working with over here. Uh, let's take a listen to the lead vocal against the instrumental. And it is worth mentioning that I've done a tuning pass in the lead vocal. If you kind of zoom in here, you can see the original pitch trace. Let's just kind of like move this down. You can see the original pitch trace is indicated in gray. And that's because I have this preference show original pitch trace that's been enabled. So you can see I've made some subtle tweaks and changes, but the idea with this particular genre, this artist and the vibe of this track is that I'm not trying to flatten out her performance. I'm just trying to kind of knock things into place and it's just requiring some subtle shifts. I think the most I changed something was a semitone. Let's take a quick listen. Okay, awesome. So the idea is that we've done our pitch correction. Now we also have a vocal double that we need to bring in. So temporarily, let's bring this in. I'm gonna use my shortcut to edit with repitch in Studio One, uh, depending on which DAW that you work in, you may have a shortcut or a different way to load it, but let's take a listen to what's happening in this vocal double. And I'm actually going to, let's temporarily take ourselves out of solo. I'm gonna double click to isolate playback from within the ARA editor. Better in the dark and the sense is up. Lights off, lights off, lights off. Ooh, look at how the world fades all around us. Okay, so we can definitely hear we have some tuning issues. Now, I've already done all the hard work with my main lead vocal. And also, if I have a double, it, I don't think it's going to be as loud. So we can actually tuck it underneath a little bit. And also, you can get away with doubles kind of not being perfect, but we definitely need to make sure that it's not rubbing. Because if we listen to the two of these against each other right now, and let's make sure that our instrumental is not solo safe. If we listen to the two of these, and I play back from within my DAW, let's take a listen. Better in the dark than the sense is up. So that rub we can't have, right? So let's head over to our lead vocal double. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin my lead vocal as a reference. Now I can click this little waveform overview and I can dial in exactly how uh, vertically zoomed I want to see these waveforms. Typically speaking, I like to see them poke out over the pitch block. I don't like seeing them underneath because I definitely need to see them. So let's, let's increase them to about here. Now I'm gonna use my dynamic zooming, click, hold and drag to kind of zoom this into place. And now I don't even actually have to listen. I can just take a look at this visually. Let's zoom in a little bit more. And I'm just gonna start click holding and dragging these purple pitch blocks until they're in the center of the white pitch trace, which we're pinning from our lead vocal. So we're working with the lead vocal double, but the lead vocal is our reference. And I'm gonna switch to the single edit mode because I don't wanna adjust the timing. So now watch this. I don't even have to really pay attention. I can just click, hold and drag. And the idea here, is I'm not actually worried about what the vibrato is or what the pitch trace is or anything. This, I need to addition this because with swoops, you never know. Better in the dark okay, this one. And actually what I'm, I'm gonna do, cheat really quickly. I'm just gonna do a draw tool to kind of smoothen out that transition. Let's go back to our single edit mode. So this one, this one, and I'm click holding and drag to reposition. This here, this one here. And then this one up here. Now, I didn't really addition any of that with the exception of the very first spot. Let's take a listen. Better in the dark than the senses up. Lights off, lights off, lights off. 
Okay, so that's that's really great because I can just use this as a reference. I've already done the work. I could literally go through the whole track, and for a double, that might be actually perfect. It might be just enough. Now, another thing I can do is I can take a look at the timing. So let's go over to the attack section. Again, we're working with the vocal double, and I want to take a look at the lead vocal as a timing reference. Now, it, we can use these handles to kind of focus in on very specific points. But again, let's close our editor temp temporarily. We're listening to lead vocal and the lead vocal double. Maybe we'll hop into a different section over here. Let's play from, let's say, bar 40. We'll open up our editor again. Don't ever want to come down from this if we don't have to. Okay. So in this case, we can make some decisions in terms of what we want to use as a timing reference. Well, since the length of the clip is pretty much the duration of this whole entire clip, this section over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the grid to be the lead vocal. We'll leave the mode in vocal. And then I'm just going to align all attacks to grid. And let's take a look at what happens to the timing. It, it just kind of knocked things in. It just kind of like knocked them into place. Now let's take a listen. Better in the dark turn the senses up. Lights off, lights off, lights off. Ooh, look at how the world fades all around us. You're the only one I see for While we're on the subject here, notice that this word just popped out for me, right? We're looking at the vocal double, and I can see from the overlay. So let's temporarily hop in to the level mode. And in the level mode, I'm going to do the same thing. We're in the vocal double, and we're working with the lead vox. Let's zoom in right over here. And I can take a look at this white trace, which represents my lead vocal, I can see some of these vocal double lines. I can see it in the actual waveform itself if I scroll down over here, but I can see just from, from within this editor. I need to bring these down big time. And what I'm doing here is I'm kind of just using the white trace to match the levels. So anything that's sticking out way too much I'm going to use that as a reference point, and I'm just going to bring this down, right? Because we're seeing these two overlays. And of course, if we hop into the attack mode too, we can also see these level changes because the attack mode and the level mode, they don't show any pitch changes. So we can kind of see, here's another case, right? In this case, we see that our lead vocal double for this particular word, this is actually lower than the lead vocal. So if I went into the level now, I can see that this one, this one actually needs to be brought up, and then this would be a bit better of a match. Better in the dark the senses up. Lights off, lights off. Okay, so th this is kind of giving you an indication. And it's interesting that the pitch and the level and the attack modes, they're all kind of interchangeable. But sometimes, like notice that when I was in the smart attack mode, that a level change that I had missed in, uh, initially, it really stood out because I have this flat kind of like one dimensional look to my audio and I can kind of scroll through and just navigate like this one over here. I can tell that the back half of this vibrato, this could actually stand to be brought up a little bit. So this has given me kind of indications of things I could do. Now, another thing I want to look at quickly is maybe we'll take a look at one more track. I think we've got room for one more track. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this one into repitch. Now this is another type of harmony. This is a low harmony. And let's kind of bring this in. We'll scroll this into view and let's take a listen to what's happening with this harmony track. I'm just kind of zooming this in. Ooh, look at how the world fades all around us. Okay. Now I could do a quick tuning pass if I wanted to. So one thing I might consider doing is let's kind of like zoom in. I'm going to switch to the center notes tool. And if I highlight across here, Watch what happens is I just, I, I use this slider. I'm just kind of like knocking these in. Let's see if it did a good job. Ooh, look at how the world fades all around us. Okay, that sounds pretty good to me. Let's actually play that against the lead vocal from that exact spot. Ooh, look at how the world fades all around us. Okay, so that harmony sounds good to me. Okay, so we're working with the Vox mid harm. Let's bring in our lead Vox as a reference. Let's actually switch over to the attack mode. And what I can do here is if I zoom into this section, I want to take a look at the timing differences. So this is not bad if we play the two of these. Ooh, look at how the world fades all around us. But what I want to do in this case is with the Vox arm selected and the lead Vox is the reference, this is going to be the timing reference. We're going to make a selection and we're going to align this selection to grid. That just tightens it up really nicely. Ooh, look at how 
how the world fades all around us. And of course, this gives us an indication if we need to level anything off, but this is a really great starting point. So now if we take a listen to all the work that we've done over here and we play from this section over here, let's temporarily mute these harmonies. Let's take a quick listen to our work. So you can see how having the ability to pin these references, work with these references in these different views can be super helpful when working with Reef Pitch 2. I'm Marcus Huskins, and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers. Mm -hmm.